Hey, what's happening guys? You've seen this printer before. This is my GD Tech X Plus 3. And I've had this guy for about a month now and I have printed a lot of things on it. And I thought today we'd come in here and sit down and talk about what I like and what I don't like. Let's start off with the stickers. And then there's one up here, which you, know, you really can't see. I'm pointing at it. I don't like that. Um, perhaps they peel off easily. I'm not sure. You know, they, they, they could have been placed somewhere else. You know, they're white stickers. They could have been placed on the white panels on the sides of the machine. Or yeah, something like that. Just, they're too out in your face face I guess is what I'm trying to say here all right so here we are looking at the uh, the front interface which is rather nice for the most part but see here we have our home button that takes us here and you know it tells us our speed based on clipper heated chamber system on a chip I don't care and I think most people don't either. So when we come down here to our settings, you see we have uh, manual movement controls, uh, filament loading controls, calibration controls, network setup controls, you know, all this good stuff. Whoops, wrong button. But I would like to see a prepare to print or something along those lines button on the front here if I want to preheat this I have to go settings and load and then come down here hit this and you know put in a, a, a temperature that I'm looking for I found it and it's okay and you know to be honest most of the time you're probably not going to use this this being a clipper printer but I would like to see that on the front, you know, a prepare, preheat, a button somewhere along those lines. Now, keeping with the uh, just slight annoyances theme, we're moving to the back of the printer. There's the USB drive where you can, you know, put a USB stick in with your file. It is, you can see this printer is quite long. It is the length of my arm to get back there. And unfortunately, that is also where the filament is hiding back there. Hang on, I'll give you a better view of the filament. Yeah, there's our filament dry box on the back of this really large, heavy printer. So, you know, if you need to move it out to change the filament, that can be somewhat annoying. All that being said, those are my major annoyances with this printer. All right, I got the camera about an arm's length away from the printer. It is on, it is idling. I'll even open the door so that you can hear the sound. This is the sound level when it's idling. You know, there's gonna be some machine sounds when, when the tool head is moving. But even when the fans are blowing, it doesn't get much louder than this. This is pretty much it. So I really like that it is a uh, relatively quiet printer. Let's see. I'm going to home this thing and move the you know, move the uh, the print bed's going to move up here. And I did that for a reason. I'm going to move the camera here, so bear with me while we... Okay, now that we have the build plate up in the air, you see the fan-looking little guy back there in the back? Well, not only is that a fan, that is also a chamber heater, which allows this thing to heat up to 
about 65C, which is perfect for, you know, your ABS and other engineering grade materials. Works fantastic. I haven't been able to find any literature on this that says whether or not there is an active filter or some sort of charcoal filtration. But I have printed plenty of ABS on the on the X Plus 3. And I notice a slight smell, and I am pretty sensitive to smells, especially since I, I had COVID. Um, I'm even more sensitive. It, it is not at all overpowering or cloying or annoying. So they've done a really good job of containing the aroma of 3D printing here. And, and that's a good thing. Another feature I like here is the, uh, the file system that retains your previously printed files. You know, if you're doing production level printing or, you know, you're printing a number of things and uh, you don't want to run back to the computer or whatever to reprint, you can just come down through here and uh, check what it is. Uh, like, you know, here's one that says GD X plus 3G. I'm like, is this the one I was thinking of? So you can touch it and it will bring up the preview of it and it will tell you this is going to take about 12 minutes to print it's going to use 6.8 grams of filament 2.3 meters um, this was a uh, slice for PLA and do we want the bed level or not and you know if we have everything we want there then yeah we can just go ahead and say print or oh no that wasn't the one I was looking for and you know we can come back through here which one was it no that's the one i thought it was but no that's not it uh is it this one yeah that's the one i was looking for and then you can print what you want so it's nice that that file system's on here and you don't have to run back and forth uh, to the computer because this may be far away from the computer as it has built-in networking both an rj45 port Port for hardwire networking and it does uh, Wi-Fi as well can't beat that right all right coming down over the top of this here big boy you can get a look at the insides and you can see the hardened steel rails you see I got some some grease on in there the belts and here is the print head and if you want to remove the cover it tells you here lift it up and then it will just pop off. Yeah. Once you get it up, it, it's a, there we go, a bit difficult to do with one hand. But now we can get in there and have a better look. Hang on, I'm going to change the views for you. There we go. Now you've got a better view of the print head here. You can see the extruder body up here. And the hot end down here, which is simply removable with a couple of screws, which makes it really nice. And let me show you the reason for that. So the reason for that is this printer actually comes with a separate hot end that you can bolt on. One hot end is hardened steel for abrasive materials. The other is a uh, high temp hot end, and you can switch them out quite easily as needed. Now, one other thing here I did want to mention is that uh, this reverse Bowden tube that goes, you know, through the back of the machine and out to the filament box on the back is a pain in the butt. So when I'm loading or unloading filament, I'll generally press the little release there and pull that guy out. It just seems to work a lot better for me when I can actually see the filament coming out of the end of the tube, then I can feed it into the extruder. Then I put it back in. It's just more comfortable for me. Um, other people may be more comfortable doing it different ways. But I did just want to point out that one fact. So I uploaded a file for us to have a look at. The 3D Benchy, you know, the most famous 3D print of all. We've uh, sliced it in PLA. It's getting ready to print. And I just wanted you guys to see here. Printing with enclosure may cause high temperatures and softening of filament leading to clogging. So please open the top cover and keep it ventilated. Yes. Yes, I will. So our Benchy is getting ready. I'm going to get the camera in place and uh, 
we'll get ready to watch it print very quickly. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. It should take, as you can see there, uh, about 29 minutes. And you can see once this thing goes into print mode, you have a really nice interface. Uh, starting in the upper left there, that is extruder temperature. Below that is bed temperature, which is currently being actively heated. You can tell it's red. Below that is chamber temperature. Below that is your offset and your lights. Over here, we have print speed. At 100% of what it's sliced, we can make it faster or slower. We have uh, extrusion percentage. We can you know, go more or less. And we have our three different fans that we can control. Very nice information setting. And then, of course, we have a stop and a pause button. All right, it is almost ready to print. The bed is at 60 degrees. We're just coming up to 200 to get to 210. And it is going to start here in just a second. 208, 29, 210, 11, 212. Now it's stabilizing to 11, and we're ready to print. So we're not going to sit around for the whole thing, obviously. So I'm going to let this run for a few seconds here so you can see. Even the speed of just laying this down is incredible. And this is the first layer. So I'll be back when we're a few layers in, and you'll really get to see the incredible speed of this thing. Well, we're not very far in. Uh, two minutes in, and you can see she is seriously turning and burning. All right, hang on, I'm gonna move you. It's printing black on the black plate, so it can be a little hard to see down there. But I just want you guys to get an idea of the speed of this thing. And this is at 300 millimeters per second. It's capable of speeds up to 5. Now I'm going to back up a little bit here. So you can see when this thing is moving, it can get to rocking and rolling a bit too. See a little bit of shimmy shake when that acceleration bounces from one end to the other but all in all other than those few mi minor uh, gripes I have this has just been an absolutely fantastic 3d printer that is way beyond my capabilities of using like I printed ABS ASA I tried nylon I was not successful with nylon but I believe that to be my problem and not the PD tech problem so I will continue to play with this and make interesting things and enjoy this and uh, PD tech also now has Prusa slicer profiles on their website so if you are a fan of Prusa slicer you can download um, the profiles on GD Tech's website. I'll put a link to it down below along with a link to uh, Z Banks. I want to thank Z Banks again for providing this along with GD Tech and I want to thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you're not a patron yet, check that out. Buck a month keeps the channel going. And uh, in this economy, we really need it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm and helps me make more money through advertising so I don't have to bother you, bother you guys for money. All right? That's it. I'm out. Peace.